Hello and welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Gargi Rawat. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh today hit out at Pakistan during a rally in Haryana where he said that if talks are held between New Delhi and Islamabad, it would only be on Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the territory under Pakistan's control since it invaded the region in 1947. He also said India will not initiate a dialogue with Pakistan as long as it supports terror on its soil. By the statement, India turning the tables on Pakistan, putting the focus on Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Kashmir. Also, this statement from the Defence Minister coming a few days after he had hinted that India could change its no-first-use nuclear policy. Bharat and Pakistan ke beech baat honi chahiye. Kis baat par baat honi chahiye? Kaun sa mudda hai jis par baat honi chahiye? Kyo baat honi chahiye? Baat yadi Pakistan ke saath hogi, tabhi hogi. Jabki jo atankbaad. वो संरक्षण देने का काम पैदा करने का काम पाकिस्तान अपनी धरती पर कर रहा है जब तक उस आतंकवाद को समाप्त नहीं करता है तो पाकिस्तान से बातचीत करने का कोई कारण नहीं है मेरे बहनों भाई और आगे भी जो बातचीत होगी किस मुद्दे पर बातचीत होगी अरे बात होगी अब तो पाक अधिकृत कश्मीर पर बात होगी बहनों भाई और किसी मुद्दे पर बात नहीं होगी ये बात सच है कि यहां तक हमारी न्यूक्लियर पॉलिसी का सवाल है उसमें नो फर्स्ट यूज कि आज तक हमारी पॉलिसी यही है अब भविष्य में क्या होगा ये सब परिस्थितियों पर निर्भर करता है all right, well, to talk more about the Defence Minister's statement, joining us uh, today on the show, Sharath Sabarwal, former High Commissioner to Pakistan, Tehseen Poonawala, political analyst, uh, Dr. Geeta Bhatt, political analyst as well, and uh, someone who supports the BJP, Tehseen uh, supports the Congress. Also, hopefully, we're being joined uh, by Pakistan senior journalist Imtiaz Alam. Well, I'd like to start first by asking uh, you, Ambassador Sabarwal, your reaction to Rajnath Singh's statement today, a very aggressive statement, strong statement, turning the the tables as it were on Pakistan putting the focus on Pakistan occupied Kashmir making it clear that Kashmir is off the table well I think what the minister has said is and has been the national position of India uh, which is also contained in a resolution passed by our parliament in February 1994 uh, which says that the entire territory of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India that the only matter that needs to be settled is vacation by Pakistan of the territory illegally occupied by it. Now, this is the position we have been stating to Pakistan during our dialogue with them on the uh, Kashmir issue also. I think what the minister has said, and he was speaking at an election rally, he has uh, uh, said that the dialogue will be only on this issue. So, he is emphasizing uh, that part. Uh, but the point that I was making was that return of this territory it has been a part of our national position. And let me also say this, that Article 370 was about the special status of Jammu and Kashmir and the applicability of the central laws to that state. Uh, uh, it didn't uh, imply any doubt whatsoever about the finality of the state of Jammu and Kashmir to India. So therefore, the national position that I talked of existed still, before the, the, the scrapping of 370 the and continues to exist. Right, sir, but still the statement, the, the manner in which it came from the Defence Minister, making it very, very clear that, you know, now the conversation is only about a POK. There, there's no other issue right now between uh, India and Pakistan at all. Yes, that of course, you know, that uh, if that is the basis on which we proceed, uh, that will present a whole, whole new situation because, as you know, since 1997, we have had an eight-track dialogue. We instituted an eight-track dialogue with Pakistan in 1997. And that's been on various other issues, trade, people-to-people uh, -people contacts, uh, CHN, Sar Creek, etc., etc. Now, if the minister is saying that it will be only on one issue, and that also when terrorism ends, uh, that is an old position of the government that's well-known terror and talks cannot go together. But this, uh, right. if it implies that there will be no discussion on any other issue, this is a new, uh, new position. And so that do you we are welcome these, these tough, uh, firm statements that, you know, the, uh, we've been seeing uh, the defense minister just a few days ago also spoke about uh, the nuclear policy and how that is also something that could change? The climate in which uh, we are today, the relationship has nosedived and I am not surprised there are very strident statements coming from other side and That's you right. have said something of this kind here. All right, uh, Tehseen, uh, your reaction to what the Defence Minister said today? 
So first of all, <clears throat> I'm on board with what Mr. Sabrawal said that uh, there is no doubt in my mind or any Indian's mind that the entire state of Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India, including the portion that is today with China or the portion that is with Pakistan. So there is, so what the Honorable Defence Minister said is a stated position of India. In fact, even Pakistan doesn't call but it... said uh, in a very, uh, in a very tough way, a strident way, in a very firm way, you know, uh, I don't Making know why should that... somebody saying it be firm because the par because the parliament has passed a resolution on this. This is even 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 uh, even Pakistan, and that was the second point I was coming to. Does not consider Kashmir the Kashmir that it occupies as a part of its territory. It considers or calls it for international community as Azad Kashmir. So even Pakistan makes no claim over it. It is our territory. There is no doubt about it. So the defense minister saying is nothing new. What is, however, new is this very important fact. That if you're not going to talk on any other issue except for that particular issue, uh, which is the Pak occupied Kashmir issue, so you're not going to have any other diplomatic talks with Pakistan, how are you going to take the relationship forward? Because Pakistan clearly has another position on this. As so far as Kashmir itself is concerned, our agreement, the Shimla agreement, and later on uh, the, the agreement with Prime Minister Vajpayee makes it very clear this is a bilateral issue. My last point that I want to make is simply this. As so far as the nuclear policy is concerned, well, I, this is where I disagree with Mr. Sabrawal. It's okay to be a little jingoistic, but conventionally, we are a more powerful army. We've agreed this. We've defeated them in three and a half wars, Kargil being the three conventional wars in Kargil. We've defeated them. There is no way they're going to beat it. Why would we want to make but, a statement in an environment? Seen, in an India's environment, always just, been, just let me make my point. It's very important. Sure, sure, where we're ahead. trying to get into the NSG, and that may lead to that may lead to a vote against us in the NSG. China's already working against us and create tensions. I just think that when Pakistan, when conventionally they cannot match up to us, why are we changing or making that position right now for the domestic audience? We must also cater because he's a diplomat to what the world is looking at us. That is important for us. Well, for the moment, it seems the world is uh, agreed uh, with India that well, it is a bilateral Russia issue. Was that discussed. Russia, Russia was uh, Russia was also asking for UN, uh, asking for a UN to look at it. China took its position for the first yes, time. China Russia took, took its, its position, position, but it so seems the matter has the been internationalized. Look, that it's the matter has been internationalized. We should not further internationalize it. This is in our national interest. All right, Dr. Geeta Bhatt. Well, uh, Gargi, you see. Uh, you know, uh, whatever has happened in United Nations, as the SNG was also saying, uh, one has to look at things, you know, uh, in, with respect to also beyond United Nations. If you look at it, most of the, you know, uh, Islamic countries also, they are the, they are the one who have actually been there standing with India. You look at Bahrain. In fact, they detained many Pakistanis who's, who, you know, on the day of the Eid festival, uh, after festivities, they were doing a protest against uh, uh, the Article 370 issue, they were detained by them. Same is with whether it is Saudi Arabia. You saw the, most of the countries they have said they they have said that bilaterally they need to talk about it. They do, no one wants to interfere, and we have been as you said we have got uh, you know most of the big countries, uh, whether it is Russia, even in terms of United States, or most of the, these countries they uh, they have they are standing with India over it. And secondly, if you look at Pakistan, I mean it is nothing short of an enemy nation for us. We all know that we have seen the kind of a hostile nature, the way breed grounds have been provided to terrorists over there, the terrorist attacks which have taken place years and years again and again uh, from Pakistani soil. All this happening, why is it that even there is, there, there, there is a doubt about it that we need to have a, have a dialogue over it, over the issue of Jammu and Kashmir, especially now when you know Article 370 is gone away with. The problem is that Pakistan like a crybaby has been going everywhere trying to inter internationalize the issue the way in United Kingdom one of the very close associates of the present Prime Minister Imran Khan was very much part of the kind of you know uh, violent protests that uh, certain Pakistani uh, people they try to make it in uh, United Kingdom. All this, you know, all this scenario is not going to help, especially key, what is the human right position of Pakistan on it, Gargi? How they are treating their own people, the genocide that they have well, done I'll, in I think a lot Balochistan, on, uh, the Hindus, forward, the Christians. You know, from tomorrow, we're going to have uh, the restrictions being eased tomorrow. And I think that's going to be very key because so far, yes, uh, countries largely have supported and felt that, yes, it is something that India and Pakistan need to discuss. It's bilateral. Uh, but, uh, you know, how 
the government treats it going forward, what we see emerging from Kashmir, because there is deep anger in Kashmir, once those restrictions are lifted, how uh, you know we, we handle it, what we see over there, uh, that is something the world will be watching as well, isn't it, Ambassador Sabawal? Uh, well, certainly, but before that, let me make two quick points. You know, sure. One, I do not think, uh, and I wonder whether the minister really meant that we'll talk to Pakistan only about vacation of that territory. Exactly. Because in the A track dialogue, we also had terrorism, yes. which is a matter of prime interest to us. So he showed so you, th you think it could that, have been a that, loose uh, statement, something being made during a rally, yeah, playing I, to the I audience? Think that's, that's one. Second, let me, let me complete what I wish to say about uh, the statement on no first use. Uh, the minister said, We have observed this policy, we are observing it today. Uh, it could change according to the developments in future. Now, this is not uh, an essential feature of the constitution of India that you are not going to change it. It can change. But I only wonder whether this is the right time for us to speak of it. Because Pakistan is trying to create a sense of crisis. A crisis in South Asia which could lead to threaten world peace. That has been the basis of their taking the matter to the UN Security Council. So timing is something which uh, we have to look at. Uh, third, I think I noticed uh, on, on Kashmir what you said. I noticed what our ambassador to the UN said, that the members of the Security Council uh, appreciated the fact that we were slowly easing the restrictions. Obviously, right. they were looking at that. Yes. Uh, so if we do ease restrictions and the things normalize, I think that will be to our advantage. All right. And speaking of uh, strident statements uh, or, or strong statements coming uh, from, you know, from our government, uh, what about the statements or the tweets rather that we've seen from the Pakistan Prime Minister today, uh, Imran Khan tweeting, uh, they were so over the top, we can't even show you uh, on our screens right now, the kind of, you know, statements he was making about uh, even questioning whether uh, the Modi government can be trusted with uh, India's uh, nuclear arsenal. So really, yes, really trying to raise the pitch and uh, play the victim, as it were, in, in, the, in this world scenario, calling upon uh, the foreign, foreign nationals to, you know, nations to, uh, you know, draw their attention to what's happening in Kashmir and, uh, and to talk about uh, the Indian government. Well, you know, I have uh, seen many such phases. Uh, I did two sure things have. in Pakistan uh, and, you know, phases when all kinds of statements fly around. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference. What matters is the situation on the ground. And I think that's where it is important that even the U though the UN Security Council held an informal meeting, informal consultations, they didn't come out with any outcome. And that was something very positive uh, from our point of view. All right, you Tehseen, you had wanted to say something. flying around for some time. Sure. Tehseen? There, there are just a couple of points I want to make. Geeta ji said that Article 370 now makes Kashmir absolutely an internal matter. I think there could not have been a more irresponsible statement. Kashmir always was an no, internal I matter. Article internal 370. Matter. I said, said gone, away. Said I said gone away. It makes no difference to it Kashmir. It has gone away. It makes no. absolutely they, no difference. No, Anybody they, who understands they, they geopolitics or internet. As long as this article was there. please make my point. Anybody who understands the Kashmir issue or even an iota of international politics, Article 370, you have an expert here, makes absolutely no difference to, to the abrogation of the watering, to what the Kashmir issue is and our stand on it. It makes zero difference. But let's come to the larger point and I completely agree with the ambassador. He in fact took forward the point I made. And, and Today, by zero you know, difference, Atesin, you are saying that it, it's not going to solve the issues that we've been facing in Kashmir all this while. Look, there are two issues. The issues that we're facing in Kashmir, what is it that we're talking about? One is terrorism. Terrorism. Forget trade. We don't want to do trade with them. We don't want to have any bilateral other contact with them or people to people contact. But if you're not going to talk terror with them, how are you going to deal with them? Ultimately, you have to at least give them a dozier about a terror attack that's happened or the investigations. All right, but as number the one, number said, two, this, this, is, this is very important. Number two, and I agree with the ambassador, he took my point forward on the nuclear statement made by the Honorable Defense Minister. I think at a time when the international community is looking at us, where Kashmir was discussed after 40 odd years in the United Nations, I think making statements like this does not argue well at this point. Everybody knows we have the right to change our policy. Why do you have to make a policy? Can a right. policy, fact, nuclear policy be made only uh... for one country, Pakistan? You have another neighbor, China, which is a nuclear country. Why are you making these statements right now when you want to get into energy? Is my limited point to the Honorable Defense Minister. All right, uh, Dr. Bhatt, uh, your reaction to that, that uh, and as the um, uh, ambassador also said that do we need these sort of statements right now, given the way relations are, the, we're, we're still waiting to see what happens in Kashmir once those restrictions are lifted. So do we really need uh, such strong, uh, you know, the, this, this, these tough statements emanating from our government at this time? 
You see, I, I do not see the, any toughness and in terms of see it has been it is a very simple statement that anything that happens in this future will be circumstantial. You know at that particular point of time how things are what a you know what kind of relationship it is there and also the kind of you know uh, if there is any tension then in, in there that, that is what is going to decide uh, what kind of a decision that the government is going to no, take. But so, to it talk about a very simple policy but the fact that is, you know it could be changed. You and see and Gargi, and the point is that the you know that Pakistan has been over the years has been trying to uh, you know generate money over the name of Jammu and Kashmir and that is what now you know that is what they are missing right now and that is why they are making so much of noise about that it. And that, that is yes I know I let us finish Pakistan has been over China 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 you know give that is China kind of statement you see it is for it is very important for me to know the point is that has is in that statement has there been any country which has been discussed no so you say China also we can do this it can, be, it can be with respect to any country. Do we Why, as a sovereign nation, where we have a right, the government has a right to decide the kind of a policy. That the nuclear policy, have. but yes, but do we need these kind of statements at a time like this? And and yes, it was made on Atal Bihari Vajpayee's death anniversary at Pokhran. Uh, initially, uh, you know, some analysts assumed that maybe he just said it there at the moment. But no, it, it was obviously a very uh, thought out statement to have made. You don't just make casual statements on the nuclear policy and the fact that uh, you could change the no first use policy. It, yeah. Right, Dr. Bhatt. Well, you see, I mean, today, if you if you look in the global perspective, Gargi, India is one of the one of the nations that the whole world is looking up to, whether it is in terms of international relation or whether it is in terms of other issues. Now, if the if the government or if any official or the you know minister of the, of the government comes out and puts forth a perspective, it is basically trying to trying to tell that we are not someone who are at, at this point of time like we have seen you know in the earlier government have have a pessimistic you are a passive approach towards thing. It, we are going to face it as and wh when you know it happens uh, you know looking at the things uh, the way it is right there and then. And that is what the point I think uh, the defense minister was trying to make. All right, Ambassador Sabarwal, do you feel we've been too passive in the past? And, and, and I know a lot of these statements and a lot of uh, the, the, the decisions being taken right now are being appreciated, uh, the, the government really playing to its core base, its supporters, and, uh, and getting uh, you know, adulation and appreciation for taking this tough stance. Well, let me put it uh, this way, you know, Pakistan is a much weaker country. They have got very little traction from the international community for all the noise that they have made. So I'm not surprised that those kind of statements are coming from Pakistan and from Imran Khan. We are a confident country. Let's deal with them on the ground. As I said earlier, what matters are not strident statements. You know, I have seen too many of them flying around earlier also. What matters is the situation on the ground, your interests. Uh, now there, uh, I think it was a positive outcome for us that the Security Council didn't reach any conclusion. They didn't right. get enough support, China and Pakistan, for what they wanted uh, uh, to, to say. Uh, what is important now for us is not to add to the sense of crisis that Pakistan is trying to create and say that South Asia is going to be yeah. on fire, this is a nuclear flashpoint. In fact, it's probably uh, therefore, uh, the defense minister's statements on yeah, uh, you know, our nuclear policy that led to Imran Khan's uh, tweet, uh, you know, uh, tweets today, a series of tweets where he talks about how, yeah. you know, can't be trusted, this nuclear arsenal and how the world needs to be wary yeah, of, of what's course, happening. Of course, he will say that. But, you know, their whole case is that this is a nuclear flashpoint, this threatens world yeah. peace. Therefore, it's a matter worth consideration by the UN Security Council, action by the UN Security Council. Uh, I think... Let them as a weaker country make all those statements. Let's be a little more confident and, you know, and deal with the situation on the ground rather than making too many statements. Especially okay. since, uh, you know, Imran Khan has tried everything, even approaching uh, the U.S. president and finally President no, Trump also saying happened. that it's a bilateral issue, India and Pakistan. So essentially getting nowhere. And uh, so you're saying that we don't need to give him more fodder at this point, talking yes. about changing our nuclear policy so he can then talk more about it. We are in a sense winning. In, in this yeah. particular thing, we are winning. So why should we, we, we be talking too much and you know, adding to the sense of crisis that he is, will, he is wanting to create?
Right, yeah. Tahseen? Yeah. See, you know, uh, we've not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Despite that, we got the exceptions in the 123 agreement and agreements to pursue our nuclear capabilities. But why did we get that? Because Prime Minister Vajpayee, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, irrespective of governments, proved that we are a very responsible nuclear power. That was something that held India in very good state. That's Today, right. we want to be a part of the energy. It is tremendous advantages to be a part of the energy. And China is the only country, correct me, Ambassador, if I'm wrong, or one of the leading countries that is blocking us or takes the lead in blocking us. Right. When you make irresponsible statements like this, and when Gita Bhatt clearly says, look, our policy not just for Pakistan, even China, do you know the amount of damage you do to India's credibility? There is, as the Ambassador rightly said, you've won the battle against Pakistan. Yes, they managed to take it to UN. Nobody took them seriously. They didn't get this. They, they didn't get the support. Why would you want to ruin our own credibility? Credibility, no single party, but everybody together is built over 70 years. For what? For domestic audiences? Aren't some things larger than domestic audiences? It's something that we all should ponder. No, I just want to add uh, 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 that speculation is that seconds. internally, of course, uh, you know, Rajnath Singh also asserting himself within the cabinet. But yes, uh, Dr. Geeta Bhatt, no, I as the ambassador to, I, said, I just want to uh, add to we what are winning was saying. In a, in a sense, was, in the worst scenario right now, India... It is not in terms... I mean, when, when the Chinese tanks are, you know, standing outside Hong Kong, they have no local standing of talking in terms of, you know, any other country. Right, but right? So, I mean, like, why, why are we talking here in terms of, you know, like, I did not, first of all, say about China. I said, irrespective, of the, the statement did not include any of the name of any of the countries. That is what I was trying to say. I just wanted to so correct At a point when, when, when we are clearly, as, as uh, Ambassador Sabarwal anyway, says, you, we you should do be not know what challenges we are going to face as a country a in the nation future. That, you know, it, it, it doesn't have as much credibility. It's making a lot of noise, trying to, you know, make it seem as if this is a massive crisis. But at such a time, we don't need such statements, especially since now is the real test, actually, because uh, we may be at the moment, uh, the world and, and, you know, countries are supporting India's stand and, and you know, whatever we've said about this being an internal issue, bilateral uh, talks with Pakistan, etc. But now is the time to, uh, is, that's the test because from tomorrow when the restrictions lift and going forward and how many days can we keep restrictions in place, how many uh, days can we keep, uh, you know, the leaders under arrest, all this is also something that will be watched very closely by the world, so we have to be very careful. Well, as I said earlier, you know, um, the members of the council, as we know, appreciated the fact that we are relaxing those restrictions, but that also implies that they are looking at that situation. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the, the way that situation evolves uh, would matter right. in, so th in that's why know, I want to what kind of Dr. meddling we could expect from others. Right, uh, Dr. Geeta Bhatt, yes, your, uh, you know, what do you have to say about that? Because now is the real test on how we handle Kashmir going forward because this, this is not something that, it's, it's not over, it's, it's a long stretch, it's a long way to go and uh, now will be the real test. Well, yes, I think uh, the government has uh, already, you know, announced earlier that, uh, you know, there will be in a phased out manner, normalcy will be restored uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. And they have been like, you know, the telephone line, uh, landlines have been restored. And uh, from next week, it is expected that the schools are also going to have ho open. So, let us have a, you know, let us look at look at the things in a positive way. And now way. it's when, and, when the government has to walk the talk, all these plans that they've made for Kashmir, all these uh, grand ideas uh, that, that will be unrolled over the next couple of days. It's, it's now that we'll see whether it'll genuinely work or uh, how the Kashmiris react to this. Because so far we haven't heard enough from them. Well, yes, you see, I mean, you know, for, for because of Article 370, for a very long time, the Kashmiris have been deprived of many benefits, many government benefits, which, you know, the rest of the country people have been getting. So, with this gone now, I think that you know, is when, a whole and other be, debate and, probably. No, no, the, the fact is that, and of course, the Prime Minister has himself said that, you know, they would like participation in the governance, you know, at the local Again, level. Again, I said this is something so we'd like to hear from the Kashmiri themselves. Sure There's been this communication be, clamp down, so we haven't actually heard or seen enough. It just needs to be given a little bit enough. of time, Gargi. I think things will return back to normalcy. All right, yes, there will be some hiccups, but definitely I things love, will become. I love it. how people who support the BJP, BJP ideologues say one thing I'm on television. I'm not a BJP ideologue, oh, no, I'm no, sorry. I'm not saying anything people support. I'm not talking about you, ma'am. May I make my point? We've got less time. Because just today, may I make my point? Because just today, because just today, just today, 
Article 370 is is what did not get Kashmir development. Though Kashmir on many indices beats even Gujarat, but let's not get into that debate. Jammu, the BJP Jammu just today said, look, we must not allow should outsiders. Should you try? Should you not pass? I've not been getting I, any I cannot do this again. Right. I cannot As do I this said, again. Yeah. It's very unfair for so you calling me and I'm not allowed Kashmir to speak. I have to finish my point. Forward, I have to finish my point. It's very unfair. The Jammu BJP just today said that uh, outsiders should not be allowed to buy land in Jammu, and Ladakh has just said we must get a special autonomy just today. But I. Article 370 was the villain, despite Kashmir being ahead on economic and social indices of even the state of Gujarat. All right, I'm completely well, out of time. I'm sorry. Seconds, As I said, this is a whole other debate. I'm completely out of time. Thank you all uh, for joining me today and thank you all for thank watching you. at home. Good night.